Welcome back to the Morning Brew right here on CNT3. Okay, let's get into it. If you've been paying attention, you might have noticed a war of words um, emerging between Guyana and Trinidad and Tobago over the issue of vaccines. Um, and it was in response to a comment on the number of vaccines available in Guyana as opposed to Trinidad and Tobago. Dr. Rowley made some comment in last Saturday, well, sorry, two Saturdays, pre two press conferences ago, and he it elicited a response, a very impassioned response, from the advisor to the Minister of Health in Guyana, Dr. Leslie Ramsamy. Now, Dr. Ramsamy is a former Minister of Health himself in Guyana, and his comments have been described by the Ministry of Foreign and CARICOM Affairs as um, misleading, disrespectful, and potentially damaging. So we are very pleased to be joined by Dr. Leslie Ramasamy just to bring some clarity as to where his concerns lie and how he feels now. So Dr. Ramasamy, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. And Dr. Ramsamy is actually joining us from New York, so I wanted to, where you went to visit your family, so I wanted to say happy Father's Day to you. Thank you. Now, before we go into our interview, I wanted to play those comments from um, the Prime Minister that caused some concern. The Guyana government took a decision that Trinidad and Tobago did not take, and that is early in the proceedings to use vaccines that were not approved by the World Health Organization. As a result of that, Guyana had a larger volume of vaccines available. We did not participate in that, and that explains it. So if one is looking at WHO approved vaccines, it will be clear that Trinidad and Tobago got within its border more vaccines than any other CARICOM country. I mean, you um, described those comments as out of line and reckless. Um, why, why, did you take, why did you take that response to it? Okay, so there was another sentence, mm -hmm. too, and that sentence was, Guyana's vaccines don't count, and therefore Trinidad and Tobago is ahead in the Caribbean. Now, Guyana is not in a race with any country as to how much vaccines we have. We took a decision early that the vaccine in front of us, the, among the vaccines that were in use in the world, were the best vaccine. We followed that advice from Dr. Anthony Fauci in the United States, who had indicated and who had said that the vaccine in front of us is the best, best vaccine. And so whilst looking at that statement that you just played seemed like a harmless statement, it insinuated something. And whether the Honorable Prime Minister intended to or not, the insinuations were clear that these vaccines are either of very high quality, that deserve, deserving enough of WHO approval, or they were not of the quality deserving of WHO approval. No, in, no. A, in a world where there is vaccine hesitancy, where we are struggling to make sure that all of our people are vaccinated, such statements is like screaming fire in a crowded cinema. It's incendiary. And that's why I took offense. I, I meant no disrespect to the Honorable Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago, but I had to make clear that the vaccines we were using in Guyana were effective vaccines, proven vaccines. Um, we had done our due diligence. We made sure that the vaccines that we decided to use in our program, the vaccines that were available to us, uh, achieved its goal, prevent people from getting sick and prevent people from getting infected. 
Those things were proven in clinical trials. Yeah. They were proven in many countries before Guyana used them. And we have statistics to show that those vaccines work. Um, because so you're also context. actively monitoring how the effectiveness of the vaccines, you're doing exactly. live, live monitoring. Now, you're a microbiologist. Um, when I heard, I listened to the press conference, so when I saw your response after, I was a little surprised. Um, how much coverage does would the Prime Minister's press conference get in Guyana? Was that also to what prompted your response? Because it didn't trigger me and, and you'll have to, you know, forgive me. It did, when I heard the comment, it didn't trigger me as a disrespectful comment or one that was disparaging vaccines in Trinidad and Tobago. I think he was speaking in a very Trinidad and Tobago context and saying, we have this criteria, Guyana has another criteria. So if you put Trinidad's criteria and compare it to Guyana, that is why they have these amount of vaccines and that is why we have this amount. Um, and, and and I don't have an issue if it was in a Trinidad and Tobago Even context. with the use of that term, does not count. Right. Uh, right. And I don't have uh, an issue if this was in a Trinidad and Tobago context. But the Honorable Prime Minister went and made it a CARICOM context. Um, he was making the issue that in terms of vaccine and vaccination of our people that Trinidad made the right decision. Um, For Trinidad and, though. And I am not, I'm not quarreling. With yeah. You. I am just saying that, um, that that comparison then led in Guyana because it, it, you see today it's not just your radio station and the television stations which many people may not have listened to mm -hmm. or saw. But then social media picked it up and social media um, went on a rampage with it and then the leader of the opposition went in Guyana at the time when we are trying to get every Guyanese to come forward um, and said that Guyana is using fake vaccines um, so that's how it came out to many people. Right. And I could not give the prime minister a pass on that. I had to ensure um, that our people know, because like your country, Do Dr. Ramsamy, I just wanted to interrupt a second yeah. and ask and, and to talk about the opposition leaders, you know, claim that the vaccines, some of the vaccines that you have, which he has taken, I, he, I think he's fully vaccinated now. He is fully vaccinated, and with many of his v? MPs are I, with, with this vaccine, yes. Okay, that's, that's quite interesting. We're speaking about um, the Guyanese opposition leader, Joseph Harmon, um, who is now claiming that uh, there are fake vaccines in Guyana. Um, and the how, point how that much? all Trinidadian and Tobagans should know is that many of them, including the leader of the opposition, did not only take that vaccine, but specifically requested when they had a choice with other vaccines. Ah, uh, okay. What kind of impact has that had on, how, how, what is the level of vaccine acceptance in Guyana and what kind of impact has it had in the immediate short term um, to the uptake or, or people receiving, coming out to receive their vaccines? Okay, so at the moment, Guyana would have vaccinated close to 50% of our adult population um, with at least one dose of vaccine. More than 230,000 people have received at least one dose of vaccine. And as of this moment, just about 100,000 Guyanese are fully vaccinated. Um, so, and that represents about 20% of the adult population that are fully vaccinated. Um, and we know the impact because among persons fully vaccinated, not one person has been found to be positive for COVID-19. Not one of them has had to be in the ICU, obviously, and obviously no one has died. Um, 
And of the 100,000 people that are fully vaccinated, more than half of those are fully vaccinated with Sputnik V vaccine. So we know the vaccines work. And um, so what is the immediate impact? And many people start calling us, our phones were ringing out, people were showing up, asking us um, whether in fact um, there is any credibility um, to the leader of the opposition and interestingly to the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago because it, it, it is now common knowledge that the um, Trinidad and Tobago Prime Minister said that. So whilst I have no quarrel with anyone, my job and our job in Guyana is to make sure that whatever vaccine hesitancy exists, that we address that. This was not a helpful statement from either gentleman. Um, and as one of the senior people in the vaccination campaign, it is my obligation. I was not speaking on behalf of the Guyana government. I was speaking on behalf of the team that is responsible to vaccinate every adult in Guyana this year, sooner than later. That's our goal. Is that, your, is that your deadline? Every adult in Guyana? What number are you all trying to does that are translate to? We are trying to get to about 600,000 Guyanese, between 500 and 600,000 Guyanese, um, that we want to vaccinate this year. We don't want to wait for next year. Every day we wait, somebody is dying. And that is not good enough for us. A responsible government, a responsible um, Ministry of Health is going to make sure that it is today and not tomorrow. And that's our goal. The president of Guyana has announced that his goal is that as early this year as possible, every adult guidance. And when we have access to vaccines that are approved for lower age group, we will go to that. Um, so those are our goals and we have an obligation. And we do have a whisper campaign against the vaccine in Guyana. Other countries have the same. Um, and so when you have statements like these, it is not helpful. Um, you, you were saying you have a whisper campaign against the vaccines. What are kind of the things, what are these well, things that you're battling against? And well, which vaccines early in particular? On, early on, the opposition in Guyana was silent and we know that they were in the communities um, encouraging their supporters not to take the vaccine. And so in the early stages, the low uptake uh, uh, what were seen in communities that were generally supportive of the opposition parties, um, uh, of the one opposition party, um, the leading opposition party. Um, but we are overcoming that. And I am glad that the leader of the opposition a few weeks ago was forced when um, people like me take calling them out for their silence and for, for um, encouraging people. And they did. They did come out publicly and ask people to take their vaccine. But subsequently, they began other public declaration. One was the price we paid for the vaccine of $20 per dose. Um, and then now this soon after, the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago um, issued his statement the leader of the opposition came out with this fake vaccine story. Um, so, so these things force us to distract us, force us into other type of, uh, of, of activities um, so that we do not uh, stop or reduce the willingness of people to come forward and take their vaccine. I believe people, um, because of the um, instant response 
to these things. I think people um, were able to see that our vaccines work. And, and people saw the process. We didn't just go and take the first vaccine that was offered to us. We did our work. Guyana, remember, has CARICOM's oldest and most experienced food and drug regulatory authority. We follow all the rules. And by the time we took we, a decision to procure Sputnik V vaccine, more than 50 countries had already registered and begun to use them. Tens of millions of people had already been vaccinated with this vaccine when we took a decision. We studied the clinical trials data and we had validation from yeah. the Lancet, which is the one of the world's most leading medical journal. journal. Um, so, Dr. Ram so it Sammy, wasn't a light decision. Yeah. Yeah, and, 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 and I'm, I'm not disputing that. Um, I, I know because of the how, how significant the COVID-19 crisis has been um, throughout the world, um, and specifically your role in ensuring that you're, you have a very weighty um, goal in front of you, trying to, in, to vaccinate your entire adult population by the and end of the year. And we will do it. Sorry? And we will do it. Oh, no, I, <laughs> I, I'm hopeful that you are. The, the goal is really for the entire region to be as vaccinated as possible. Um, you are former Minister of Health. You're currently the advisor to the Minister of Health. So you say when you make your statement, you're not speaking on behalf of the government. Has your health minister spoken to you about your comments? And two, um, has there been any real interface? Have you been able to maybe have contact with Dr. Rowley and... Um, put across your feelings in a more di direct way. What sort of, because my concern is, what sort of impact will this back and forth have on relations between Trinidad and Tobago and Guyana, especially since there's a Chamber of Commerce that made a very concerning comment implying that um, our government is not very supportive of Guy Guyana and Guyanese. Well, I spoke on my own behalf when I issued a statement um, as me, I'm not as, um, the government of Guyana. Um, but you're a senior advisor, the though. Minister, uh, yes. Um, but, but I do have a view when I speak for that. In terms of international issues, such as responding to Prime Minister, the President, the Vice President, and the Minister of Foreign Affairs have those responsibilities. And, and so I'm making it clear again. I had no intention of picking a quarrel with anyone, but I have a responsibility uh, to ensure that any impact of any statement from anyone uh, would not have any negative consequence to the vaccination campaign in Guyana. Uh, um, that's my concern. I am not in a race, and Guyana is not in a race with any country. We are in a race. And our race is with a virus, a deadly virus. And we are not of the view that if we can vaccinate our people, that's a plus for us. We want to make sure that every country in the region and the world, because in this case, um, if there is one country that is not vaccinated against this virus, we will have a variant of that virus that will then come back to haunt all of us. So until every adult citizen in the world is vaccinated, we are all going to be in a continued danger, a constant danger. And, and so, um, you know, and Guyana, let me point out, has always taken these bold decisions in the 1990s, late 1990s, when HIV, that scourge, was killing, was killing people across our region and we didn't have medicine, Guyana was the country that went to India and brought medicine um, into our country and, and, and began the manufacturing of those medicines. Mm -hmm. And we took control of the HIV situation in, in Guyana. So 
we have always done that. And, and, and one point I need to note, that when the U.S. on the 13th of December vaccinated its first person, and then in December of 2020 vaccinated more than 25 million people with the Pfizer vaccine, there was no WHO approval. Um, Dr. When, Ram Sammy, I wanted yes. to bring back, um, go back to the matter of if your health minister, Dr. Frank Anthony, had a conversation with you about we your talk, statements. We talked, but um, the issue of whether I had a right to respond or not did not come up. But clearly, and, and following Minister on on Anthony that, knows it. Right. And following on on that, um, Obviously, because there's also a CARICOM element to dealing with COVID-19, you have to interact, I'm sure, with counterparts throughout the region. Um, have any of your counterparts in Trinidad spoken to you? Are you concerned that from a public health aspect that um, relations might have been a little fractured by the tone? I, I don't think that Guyana and Trinidad has had anything in the last couple of weeks that would harm the strong relationship between our countries. I have many friends um, in government and out of government um, through the many years. Uh, I believe that we have worked strongly together. A public statement was made on behalf of the government of Trinidad and Tobago. Um, I clarified issues. Um, I didn't pick a fight with anyone. And yes, I found the, the, the statements um, not helpful and offensive. Um, and, and I said so. Um, but, I, I, and whilst I stand by my statement, we have moved on. We are not focusing on what um, the Trinidad and Tobago Prime Minister um, think or think not of our program, we are moving ahead. I wanted to ask you to comment really quickly. Um, Barbados has launched a travel bubble. Um, currently, Guyana is not on it, but neither is Trinidad and Tobago. But when you look at that decision, what does that mean for you um, in Guyana? What, what are your reactions? We are aware of um, travel bubbles and other restrictions around the world. Is it something um, that you're looking towards? To, to towards implementing um, Guyana as you know throughout this COVID um, pandemic has remained open um, that we have put certain restriction you have to have a PCR test before you can come to Guyana and those are still in place so it's not free for all um, and we will continue to monitor the situation um, and when it becomes possible that we can allow uh, unrestricted travel, we will do so. Um, but for the last 16, 18 months of this crisis, um, Guyana has remained open um, with these um, caveats that you have to get tested before you enter the country. And if you arrive in Guyana with a PCR test, that is older than 72 hours, then we require that you be tested in Guyana and be quarantined until your results prove that you are negative. Thank you so um, much, Dr. Leslie Ramsamy. I really appreciate you um, getting up early to chat with us from your vacation time in New York. Um, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you much. We've been speaking to Dr. Leslie Ramsamy. He's a former Minister of Health in Guyana, but he's the current advisor to the current Minister of Health. All right, time now for a very short break, but we'll be back with more after this.